If you've ever wanted to share a file from one phone to another in the same room, then you probably already know that on Android, there is no feature kind of like Apple's AirDrop. Well, there will be, and I've got an early version of it. It's nearby sharing, and I'm gonna show you how to use it next. Hands on Android is brought to you from LastPass Studios. You're focused on security, but are your employees? LastPass can ensure that they are by making access and authentication seamless, whether they're working in the office or remote. Visit lastpass.com slash twit to learn more. This is Twit. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Hands on Android. I'm Jason Howell. So file sharing, peer-to-peer -peer file sharing on Android devices has a storied history. Maybe you've wanted to share a file from one device to another. I know in my case, often when I want to do this, I go a really strange route to do it. I actually email the file to myself, which is maybe making it more complicated than it needs to be, but it's always the thing that I think of. It's like, I've got this file, I want it over here. If I email it, I know it's gonna be there immediately. And so I just do it instead of like searching out a third party app. Um, the problem is when you really step back is that Android doesn't have an easy ability to do this inside the app. Now, last week on the show, I showed off files by Google and it does have a peer to peer file sharing section to it that you could use. That's one method. I never think to use it. That's why I go the email route, but we have a solution coming up. Uh, and very soon to Android devices. So I'm gonna show that off, but first thought I'd kind of take a step back and set the scene here a little bit. Apple, of course, has a, you know, a number of features that Apple Faithful uh, claim are why they are on that platform. One of those is a feature you've probably heard of called AirDrop. AirDrop is a file transfer protocol that's designed for local file sharing. That is two devices kind of in the same general area. Uh, it works between iOS devices as well as Mac computers, so it or operates between uh, all those devices. It's an encrypted connection that doesn't even touch the internet. So it stays off the internet. It uses a direct peer-to-peer Wi-Fi connection for file transfer and is uh, often the case with Apple devices and products. It just works. It works pretty seamlessly. I've used it. I've been pretty impressed by it. Well, as far as Android is concerned, you may remember if you've been on Android for a number of years now, back in 2011 with the introduction of Ice Cream Sandwich, Google unveiled a feature called Android Beam. Now, Beam was supposed to be Google's peer-to-peer -peer file sharing uh, solution here. It leaned on NFC, which is near field communication, as well as Bluetooth for transferring of those files and of the data between two phones in the same physical location. But the problem, one of the problems, many problems, is that not all phones supported NFC. So here's a feature that not all phones right out of the gate are going to support. And even those that did support it, sometimes the carriers got involved and they mucked around with the NFC protocol, made it inaccessible for this feature. Um, also, not to mention Bluetooth and especially NFC file transfer, they're super slow at transferring files. So everything uh, was uh, basically a snail's pace as far as file going from one phone to the other. In the end, Beam was put to bed in January 2019, so not very long ago, but soon after that, we started to hear some rumblings about a true airdrop feature. And uh, this is something that we've first heard of called fast share. It's actually called nearby sharing. And I'm going to show it off to you today. Good news. Just this week, Google began beta testing this feature. So if you're uh, playing your cards right, you can check it out. I'm gonna show you how you can increase your odds of getting this feature on your device. Uh, nearby sharing actually is a local peer-to-peer -peer, uh, solution for transferring files between two devices, similar to what we're talking about. Uh, it uses Bluetooth to connect the two devices together, so that's for the connection, and then it transfers the files between them using Wi-Fi Direct, so it can get that speed boost in the transfer. There are a few caveats for the beta itself, uh, but given that you qualify, you can test it out yourself like I am, and I'm gonna show you right now how to do that. So let's take a look. So first of all, you likely will not be able to test this if you're running the Android 11 uh, beta build. I have Android 11 beta one on my Pixel 4 XL and Android 11 DP2 on my Pixel 3a, and the feature is absent on both devices. I think Google's probably just kind of limiting their exposure to bugs and stuff. If you're running the beta, you're probably not gonna see it. However, 
on my Samsung Galaxy S20 Ultra and my OnePlus 8 Pro, both running Android 10, the feature does appear. It also appears on my rooted OnePlus 5 running Android 7.1.1, so that's awesome. It's gonna be running on earlier versions. In fact, Google has stated its goal is to launch nearby on Android 6 and up devices. So that's good news for almost everybody anyways. It's not a feature that's only gonna be relegated to the most current phones. It's gonna go backwards and you're gonna see it probably soon enough. Now, in order for it to appear in the first place on your device, you need to opt into to Google Play Services beta track, so on the app itself. Before doing this, you should know that opting into anything when it's on beta uh, is you know, opening yourself up to bugs, weirdness, that sort of stuff. Beta apps and services, they are never bulletproof, so keep that in mind. It does mean that you're gonna see features like this ahead of time, and that's exciting and interesting. Uh, it also means you could see bugs in the app and your experience, so keep that in mind. With that said, Here's how you opt into the Play Store Services beta track. Go to Google Settings on your device. You just go into the settings for your phone and then find Google, tap there. And then you'll tap the Help and Feedback button. That's the question mark that's circled up in the top right corner. Tap that, it takes you to like a feedback page. Then tap the three dots more menu up in the top right hand corner and you'll see select view in Google Play Store. You can tap that and this takes you to the Google Play services on the Play Store. You just scroll down and then tap join the beta. And when you tap to join, you'll confirm and then you wait a few minutes for the changes to take effect. Now, it might take a few minutes, it might take an hour, it really is entirely up in the air how long this takes, but eventually you'll get an updated version of Google Play services downloaded. That's the beta version that's downloading. And, and at the end of the day, you might even still not find the nearby feature on your device, even though you're running the beta version, Google's keeping this relatively limited. So cross your fingers that you get it. It's possible that the Google server side switch hasn't happened for you yet. In that case, wait a little bit longer. You may not get it before the beta you know, testing is done. I don't know, I got it. So that's what I'm gonna show you uh, if you happen to get it, how to use it. So once you've opted in, and if those changes have taken place on your device, Here's how you can actually use Nearby for file sharing and how you'll use it going forward once it finally rolls out for everybody. First, Nearby sharing relies on Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and location. So you're gonna to need to make sure that all three are on in the settings of your phone, all right? Make sure those are on before you go any further. Now on my Galaxy S20 Ultra, I have an image here and I wanna share it with my OnePlus 8 Pro. And we happen to be in the same room, same physical space. In fact, my, my bedroom upstairs. <laughs> so, um, so on the S20 Ultra, I'm going to tap the image and then tap the share button. And when I get my share sheet, I'll just scroll through and you'll see in here a new icon that says nearby share. It kind of looks like some interlocking wires, that sort of thing. I'm gonna tap that and it might prepare the image, might pull it down from the servers, or if it's on the device, it's, it's good to go. Uh, it's gonna prepare it for sharing. And now we see the turn on nearby share interface. And here's where you can select a few things. I can change my device name so the recipient knows who is sending the file. Probably a good idea to do that. I could tap to switch between my connected Google accounts. I'm going to go ahead in this case and keep that untouched because this is the account that I want to use. And then device visibility. This is really important. This determines who sees my device when nearby sharing is active on my device. Meaning when nearby sharing is left on my device, even beyond like the like I'm sharing something specifically, if I happen to leave it on and my display is unlocked, these are the people that can see me through their instance of nearby sharing. And they could choose to share a file with me at any time, given it's on and they can see me. So here are the three options that you get there to kind of walk you through these. All contacts means that anyone in my contacts list on my device that also has nearby sharing turned on in this moment can see my device. So it's basically, I trust all of my contacts here to be able to share with me at any time. Some contacts only shows me as visible to a specific number of contacts in my list that I have determined. So maybe I have like my top 10 people and these are the only ones that can see me when I'm actively able to receive a file through this. And then hidden, of course, means absolutely no one can see me. I'm hiding in plain sight. Uh, even when nearby sharing is active, none of my contacts can see me. In all cases, however, 
I can see any devices near me who also have their nearby sharing turned on and have me in that list, if that makes sense, kind of the reverse direction. So back to this specific use case. I'm okay with my contacts sharing with me at any time, so I'm gonna go ahead and select all contacts. That's how it's set going forward, unless I happen to go back in and change it. That's just the way it's gonna be. Now I'm gonna hit to turn it on, and that officially switches on nearby sharing on my device. Now the feature is gonna stay on until I go in and turn it off. In other words, it's not off once I'm done sending this image. It stays on, so keep that in mind. Now, as you can see, it's looking for a device to connect to. It's looking for one of my contacts that I'm connected with. On my OnePlus 8, I'm simply going to pull down my quick settings and find the nearby uh, sharing tile that's up there. I did have to edit my quick settings to place this tile there initially, uh, once I knew that this feature was on this device, but it shows you how easy it's gonna be to activate this mode going forward. Now I'm gonna to tap to enable nearby sharing on this device and then tap turn on. And again, it's now on until I explicitly turn it off. It's very important to remember that. It doesn't turn off at the end of this transfer. Now that this phone is visible, I look over my Galaxy S20 Ultra and I see that I'm ready to connect. Um, and in fact, down there, the OnePlus 8 appears. So I tap the OnePlus 8 from there, from the S20 Ultra. And on the OnePlus 8, you can see I got a request to receive the file, a file name preview, who it's coming from, that sort of stuff. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose to, well, I could choose to either decline it or accept it. In this case, I'm gonna accept it. And once accepted, the file transfers quickly to the device, zips over, opens, and there it is. We've got the file sent over. Now, obviously, I walked you through this in long form uh, dialogue, but it's actually a pretty quick process once you have it all set up. Um, and I even tested a little bit more. I tested sending over a video file, a 1.5 gig file size, <laughs> so a pretty large video file. And I have to say it was pretty quick. It transferred in about a minute because, again, this is not hitting the Internet. It's going directly via Wi-Fi Direct from one device to the other. So the file uh, transfers pretty quickly. In fact, there's a circular progress meter. So I wasn't left wondering if the, con if the connection had stalled or anything like that. Uh, there was enough visual feedback for me to be confident about what was happening. Now, one bug that I have found in all of this, even though there is a quick setting tile, uh, it doesn't seem to toggle the way other buttons do in quick settings. So for instance, when nearby sharing is on and I look in quick settings, that button isn't lit up and it should be, and I imagine it will be. This might be part of the beta. It's, it's definitely annoying because even though my nearby sharing is on, it doesn't give me that visible feedback and I don't know that I'm kind of open to receiving files. So that's very important. Um, now I can tap that quick setting tile and it'll take me into the nearby sharing interface and I can manually switch it off there. Um, so right now it almost seems like more of a shortcut than it is a toggle. So that's kind of annoying. Hopefully they correct this with the final build, but that's nearby sharing. And like I said, if you're running Android 6.0 and up, you're likely to get this feature when it's out of the beta testing, uh, process that it's in right now. I don't know if this is going to be timed with the Android 11 release, if it's going to come out earlier or later or when, but the fact that they're beta testing it right now means it's right around the corner. Now, I'm, I've, used, uh, I've used AirDrop enough to know that I liked how easy it was. I haven't used it enough to know whether I like this better or worse. So I think you know we're just gonna have to play it by ear and kind of see how well it works. One thing that this does, that AirDrop does, um, that protects itself compared to AirDrop is that AirDrop has the ability for you to leave it open to anyone. So, you know, there are stories of people being on a bus and they left their AirDrop open and some random stranger, you know, sent them pictures that they didn't want. Uh, this does not allow you to do that because it's tied into your contacts. So it's uh, a little bit more secure as far as that's concerned. And that's a good thing, though some people might think that's a bad thing. I don't know, but uh, there you go. Hopefully that helps uh, kind of give you some ideas into what you might want to use this, this uh, feature for in the future. Hopefully it comes out soon. And hopefully if you want to test it out, you'll be let in through this beta process. Uh, and maybe this is helpful to get you there. If you have any tips, tricks, uh, questions, anything like that, 
please email me, handsonandroid at twit.tv. You can also go to twit.tv slash HOA. That is the show page on the web where you can find all the ways to subscribe to this show, all the podcatchers, jump over to YouTube, subscribe there, do everything you like. That's the page you need to know, twit.tv slash HOA. Thank you all so very much for watching. Thank you to John Ashley for editing uh, this episode. And we'll see you next week on Hands on Android. Take care, everybody. Hey, folks, I am Micah Sargent, co-host of Tech News Weekly right here on the Twit Network. Yes, Tech News Weekly is a show we do every week, Jason Howell and myself, where we talk to people who are making and a break in the tech news. That's right. It's journalists. It's inventors. It's app makers. It's everybody who's bringing the tech news in a given week. It's all the stuff you want to know about in bite-sized chunks in a fantastic package. So be sure to subscribe. It's twit.tv slash TNW.